At 8.38, we welcome in our next guest, and when we welcome in at least one of these guests, we usually welcome in a bag full of goodies. So let's say good morning to the <laughs> president of the Berkeley County School Board, Pat Murphy. Good morning. And uh, the vice president, Jackie Long. Jackie? Good morning. And where there's Jackie Long, there's a Ron Long, and where there's a Ron Long, there are uh, more goodies. These look like peanut butter cookies. This is this peanut butter cookies rock. Yeah. Right. Maria is already, even though she'll have to do like 700 extra minutes on the treadmill tomorrow, she's already said, bring the goodies over here. Amen. So there's that. And there's uh, some little cakes, right? What are those? Some, no, I'll, I'll send them to Bill. Bill will call that coconut cake, even though it's not. <laughs> Everything's coconut carrot cake. cake. And if then, my wife tells them it's coconut cake, it is. The, the standard Snickers. you got to have the standard Snickers. So. Um, those of you who aren't sugared out enough from last night, well, I got a chance to add to your sugar again today. Did, did you go trick-or-treating last <laughs> night, Rob? And if you did, what were you dressed as? Uh, I did not go trick-or-treating last night. However, I usually do a walk around my neighborhood to uh, check out the different houses because we've got some people that kind of really put on a show. Yeah. Right? Uh, but last night was too cold. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting out there with my neighbors for two hours. I was like, that's enough. I'm going in. King Street and Tennessee Avenue, which is my neighborhood, cars were bumper to bumper parked on either side. Um, you know, especially that one piece of King Street, um, they just go all out. You know, they, they dress, they decorate the houses, the kids... Um, can go easily from door to door to door. Same thing on Tennessee. For a while on Tennessee, um, the, the neighborhood was sort of changing, and there were not a lot of, um, of folks with lights on and decorations. But last night, boy, it was just, it was wild. I used to come down from the end of our street because nobody goes up the dead end, and there's only four houses up there, and you know, it's Scary. not worth your it's not worth your while if every house doesn't have a light on. Not a right? big enough return. And not a big enough return. So I'd come down to the end when Travis and Scarlet Hill um, lived on the edge there of Tennessee and West Race and just either sit with them or just give them a load of candy because the kids just kept going on that. And they did last night too. So we had two trick or treaters as the entire I told you. night too? Two. How yeah, about, and how? we invited them. So, <laughs> well, it's yeah, you know, it's you know. it's uh, Katie Wilkes Delgetti and Anthony Delgetti's two kids. Yeah. Um, you know, and but we have a load of candy left. Bill, I did not bring it. How many made their way through the <laughs> booby traps of the Stubblefield compound? You know, we, as I said the other day, we've never had a single cricket treater, and I'm disappointed. Uh, I've always enjoyed. Do you ever sit at the end of your driveway? No, no, I yeah. do not do it. It's too cold. Out there. <laughs> I know, yeah. But, but it's uh, when we lived uh, in D.C. all the time, and I, I really enjoyed them. But it's uh, that's one of the disadvantages of living. In the country, out, in the country. out, out on, a long, on a long, a long, 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 dark driveway. So yeah, I don't. I'm not surprised but, they don't make well, it. Down. We you did. Know. When you have, describe it that way, it doesn't sound very inviting yeah. for children. Yeah. Does it? We did have yeah. a group at hospice from the IRS across the street, mm -hmm. um, and they're just dear um, little um, kids in their daycare. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, just precious. Mm -hmm. So I used some of the candy there. So that was good. Well, at least some of it went to good use. Pat, Jackie, did you have much business yeah. last night? I didn't put my light on because in the years past, I was the only person with the light on. And as Maria said, they don't come down your street. So, sure. so. Yeah. when I was a kid growing up, I mean, that was a street to hit. So yeah. I don't know. If, <laughs> I guess areas change. It's changed some. Indeed. Yeah. How about you, Pat? I'm out in county. Yeah. <laughs> so forget it. <laughs> you were those folks that brought kids in by droves which yeah, is we, wonderful why not yeah. where are they going to go you yeah. know yeah, so from sue ann palmer down uh, on king's uh king street that's right that's, that's uh, you used to take my grandchildren there and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a very productive uh, you get a quick a quick quick, quick, quick hit quick, yeah yeah <laughs> quick bag full jeff you know? haddock says that you know you should offer full-size candy bars and that way, if you're if right, you're one you're house right. out of the many, that's worth it. My next, my next door neighbors do the full size candy bar. Wow! Well, wow. Well, do you advertise to let people know <laughs> down at the end of the block? 
full size candy. I always feel inadequate though when we get passed out the bite size and they've got the full size. Well, we uh, in anticipation of the trick or treaters who never come, we do have candy ready for them should they come. Just in case, and they are full size candy bars. So, uh-huh. Jeff, I am anticipated, but that even that does not do it. All right, next year, <laughs> Stubblefield Compound. Or you can, the, but Katie I, but and, and Anthony would probably bring their kids up your way. But they, as <laughs> soon as it's over at midnight, those full-size candy bars are fair game. And I, I race <laughs> to the refrigerator <laughs> because at midnight, it's over. They won't survive. I know that. Yes, Pat. Well, before we get started on education, um, I served on the commission with Wayne Dunham. And yes. I just found out that when Bill mentioned it this morning, and uh, everything you all said is true. Uh, one thing, um, when he was on the commission with Jim Smith and I, uh, he uh, he was instrumental in working with Mary Cackley on getting address conversion, mm. which is a very important service for this county. And we got a lot of uh, back- flack. Flack for yes. doing that. But yeah. I was part he, of that. He was yeah. also uh, resp- or very much involved in merging the three water, water districts together. Uh, without that, having those three independent water districts would be way behind the ball just now. So Wayne deserves a lot of credit, but as said earlier, always with a smile on his face, mm-hmm. always polite, always courteous, someone that... By definition, you had to like. He was a great guy. Oh, yeah. Even when you disagreed, it was uh, very cordial and respectful. And uh, that. And I know he was also, uh, for the press's benefit, or mm-hmm. for our country's benefit, he was very pro-open government. And he caught some devil for for uh, standing up and calling out if he thought something was, yeah. was wrong there. He did a lot for this county that people don't even realize, yeah. I don't think. Because that was the kind of person he was who mm-hmm. didn't want and he, he was, the recognition. Mm-hmm. And he was working with his brother on the, at a sawmill, because uh, I took some uh, uh, lumber over there to be milled. And he was still working, uh, I know, two summers ago, I believe, two or three summers ago. Mm-hmm. Great guy. Yep. We'll all miss uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Wayne Dunham for sure. Uh, Pat, let's uh, turn our attention and Jackie to the Berkeley County School Board and the uh, Board of Education and uh, some work that you folks are doing. Uh, you it was your meeting last night. There, there, I know there was. No, a, it's a, the oh, sixth. It's the sixth. Okay, yes. I know there's a meeting where you guys got to do some work on some things. Uh, what's on your agenda at that time? Well, I will not be able to attend. I'm having a knee surgery that day, so, but uh, I announced a couple meetings ago i want to give each board member a chance to run a meeting set the agenda uh do it and jackie's going to do that uh on the sixth so i'll let her tell you what's on her agenda <laughs> well Jen, well, well you're going under the knife huh? i don't know what's on the agenda yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're meeting today regarding that right so, that, that's yeah. i had gotten an email about that that's yeah. what i was referring to yeah. so now okay. jackie so determine the agenda at the meeting yes. yeah. at t- t- no today we'll be meeting with legislators at three o'clock um okay the superintendent and i will meet today at 11 to set the agenda and what are you hoping to accomplish with the legislators well oh where do we start uh you know there's some issues with uh, bus operators pay and pay step for bus operators uh i feel that the cooks don't get uh, paid enough and and just the uh, the things that we have worked on in the past sessions with um pay um uh you know discipline um on and on the past thing the past issues that we have not much of it has changed so so Hal Van Meter spoke to our Rotary Club several, several weeks ago and talked about um, uh, truancy and just the number of students and how it's, um, you know, obviously become even more significant post-pandemic because for whatever reason, you know, it's not that important for your kids to go to school or what have you. I, again, I don't want to paint with that broad of a brush, but some of the statistics that he was quoting was were pretty, um, pretty frightening. Something to the, the tune of 25 to 28 percent of students are chronically absent. absent, and that's, you know, not 
that's more than that's about like five days a month or something like that well, can you what, talk about that a little what, bit yes what uh first uh mr van meter will be on the agenda today to do a presentation to the leg legislative delegation uh one of the um, issues that we're going to ask is that they allow 10 percent absences in the code that's 18 days a year that's far too uh to, you know you're trying to establish a work ethic one of the other things that we see in our high schools is we have a lot of students who are having to work. And, and uh, I, you know, I did the driver's license things years ago. Mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. I think they've diluted that. I haven't followed it that much. But, but um, the shortage of workers in our community, they're, they're hitting on the high school kids. Uh, and the kids are closing uh, food places at night. Uh, you know, it depends on the employer. Mm -hmm. So we're having, uh, we're seeing some problems because of the, uh, the shortage of workers, mm -hmm. as well as um, the the um, this wide open gate that we're going to ask them to narrow down of allowable a absences. Uh, eight, that's almost a, a month's instruction uh, eight, that's allowable. Mm -hmm. Good and. We got to tighten up on absences far beyond, uh, far sooner than 18 days. I think the the days of, as my mother used to say, "Well, go, you'll feel better when you get there." You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> Parents don't think that way anymore, and we have to get past the pandemic um, mentality. Uh -huh. We can't get. We can't keep using that as an excuse. I know there are some mental health issues with our kids, but you know, as a school system, we're very much trying to address those. And when the student stays home, that is not addressing those issues. Um, we can't keep using that as an excuse. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the mentality is of some parents to constantly let their children stay home i know do the parents know in many cases well that was just what i was going to say i know that some parents go to work before their students get on the bus and actually they probably don't know until they get home that the students stayed home unless the student is a chronically absent student then that you know they would get a call regarding that even if it's a message on their cell phone that they could look at later during their work time so uh, I know they get notification of that, but I don't know if they could leave work to get the child to school. So it's, uh, it, I think it's a, um, an issue that we have to address and address hard. Another issue uh, was this SAT score, the Damon report that came out three weeks or so ago that showed uh, Berkeley County uh, among the more severe counties as far as failing with the SAT. Uh, what is being done to specifically address this problem? Well, we've, we've used academic uh, coaches and, and uh, extra help in the schools. We're also moving down uh, the legislature, and a commendable item is to uh, have teacher aides in the first three grades. Uh, but one of the problems, I, th I think, now this is Murphy's opinion, and uh, not Murphy's, Murphy's law. law. Murphy's <laughs> law. Come on, come on, Pat. You can't help you. I'd like to. I'd like to come up with a Murphy's policy, but uh, I, I've worked with five, four other good, uh, independent-minded people, and I've lost four to one as a board president. <laughs> there's, there's no threat in the uh, title there, but take take the. Uh, we have this philosophy. We're going to meet the individual needs of the student. And we move the child to the school system with this philosophy. Now, one place where I don't see it happening is in a high school orchestra. If you're, if, we have wonderful band directors in this community, and they do a great job, but they push the students up. You don't have part of your band playing Mary Had a Little Lamb while the other part's playing Pachelbel. You have to get that group going. And we need that philosophy in the, in the classroom. We, we have dropped the passing grade down to 60%. Well, for that, that's, that's diluting, it, uh, and there's, the criticism is justified. But we're not, we're, we're not even bringing kids up to 60%, and we're moving them along. And I just, um, I, I ju I just 
you can't tell a teacher you will make a year's progress with kids on level and also have another group of kids who are two and three years below level. You only have one year. And if you're going to teach, we need to start teaching toward the upper end and bringing kids up to that and retaining the ones who can't cut the muster. Well, whose decision is it to be able to implement that, Pat? You're the board president. Jack is the vice president. You folks hired the new superintendent. What's stopping this from happening? This, this is being argued even now in the thing. Bargain about who? Who's, who's arguing? We're arguing in the board office, but really the, the direction it's is set us. by the State Department. Well, and also, think about it, Rob. Do you want a 16-year-old in fourth grade? Well, there's a limit I, to how many times you can be held back, obviously. Right, right. You don't want someone driving to school th- in elementary but, school. But, Pat, but Pat's making a very good point in, mm-hmm. con- in contradicting what you're saying. I'm but, sorry, Rob. Yeah, well, the, the issue is that if, if you keep promoting kids who don't deserve to be promoted— mm-hmm. And then we've seen cases where they then get out of high school and a couple of years later sue the school district for promoting them without them having learned how to read and write appropriately. Now you're opening yourself up to liability because there's a precedent that these lawsuits can go forward and in some cases award damages. So you're, you're looking at, you you're lose looking at promoting side. kids into suing you by doing this. You, cost, you could be costing yourself a lot of money. But you also have to think that um, if, if you keep... Uh, if you retain a student and they will drop out at you know there's that philosophy uh, or statistics show that if you if you retain students that they end up being dropouts yeah Um, well but that's but but if you promote them and they graduate it's a meaningless piece of paper so in the end it's the same thing yeah it's a double-edged sword Mm -hmm. i see both sides of that Mm -hmm. yeah but but i it's i'm sorry go ahead no i was just going to say it to think of that I'm being moved ahead in a class to the next grade that I couldn't uh, retain the information that I uh, was supposed to in the, the grade I am, think of that student. I feel bad for that student because they're continuously lost. This is symbolic of one of numerous problems. We have one with discipline. We have uh, uh, security. We mentioned graduation rate. We mentioned truancy and the whole bit. Uh, and I'm confused. I've been and I've stated my confusion several times on the show, and I'm going to say it again right now. Uh, with uh, uh, with President Truman, there was a this famous "the buck stops right. here" sign. <laughs> What I see in West Virginia, we have the state school board, we have the local board of education, we have the uh, the uh, superintendent of schools and the like. Where does the buck stop? Who has the responsibility to address and to put into meaningful guidelines some of these problems, the challenges we're making? Well, I think the school board has a major responsibility at the local level. Um, I've I've seen the legislature responding uh, to that uh, that need. They they passed the law a couple of years ago that a teacher couldn't be forced to change their grade. Good law. The, uh, this is two sessions ago. They passed the law that said the um, school uh, the teacher is the primary one who makes a decision about promoting the child. But the teachers have been pressured to move kids along. They've been pressured. I, I saw it in Berkeley County before I left. Everybody's on the honor roll. Everybody wants a bumper sticker. My child's on the honor roll at School X, and and we've had, we've done this inflation. I don't know whether it's to sell sell ourselves or whatever. You know, the graduation rate comes down from the from the feds. That you, that's part of the. Uh, I forget, and it's by, it's a. Uh, both political parties have promoted this. You know, you have to have a high graduation rate. But uh, we're like Alabama. Alabama, we have Saban as a common factor and with Alabama, Coach Saban. But we also have a high graduation rate but a low-performing l- level for our graduates. And, uh, well, that, and, and I, I th- that's why I say I think some of this is state. Problem. Take, take – there's a law that says you will – this it, I didn't bring my code book, but it says the the students will perform uh, master. master and something else, or uh, and progress. The state board changed that the student will do A and B, or you're going to hit the mic, or, or Thank you, Jackie, or progress. 
And I always use the example, do you want mashed potatoes and gravy? Or as the state would take that law and say, do you want mashed potatoes or but, gravy? But the mm-hmm. bottom line is, Pat, we're not, we're failing. We're yes. failing along a, 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 a several ways. We're 49th or 50th. We hear this all the time. Yet, as Mike Height frequently mentions, we put more money per capita per student than any other state. And we're failing. Uh, and... And I'll come back to my basic question. Is one of the reasons that we're failing is we have too many cooks in the kitchen, each turn in different directions? Uh, should we not? Who's responsible for this? Who do we look at as p- concerned parents that our, my child is not getting the, my child and other children not getting the education they deserve? Uh, why? Is it bureaucracy? Is it the, someone not doing the job? Is the fact there are just too many people involved? Uh, this is the sort of question I think we have to resolve first before we start looking for individual excuses. Well, first I, I want to say this isn't just Berkeley County. I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about just Berkeley yeah. County either, Jackie. I'm talking about I, state as a whole. Well, I, I and, and I want to be specific about yeah. that. This just isn't Berkeley County. But a lot of the... Um, everything flows from the feds down to the state down to us so so excuse me a second now we're making an excuse no i'm not making i know no that i'm telling you the truth yeah but that same thing i've heard before we're always putting the finger somebody else we have this control and excuse me i'm not pointing the finger at you jackie i'm just saying this is the type of argument i invariably hear that somebody else is going to be the one responsible not me well, I, 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 I ran for the Board of Ed. I want to be responsible, and I, I, I will take that blame. I, we have to figure out what to do, and we've been working on that, uh, and we, we hope to get some good results out of it. Yeah, one of the... Now, let me forget. Let the, uh, everybody know when Jackie came in, we shared a hug. When Jackie leaves, we'll share a hug. We're good friends. Oh, okay. yeah. I know. I can get in a heated argument with my best friend. So yeah, I'm sorry. We, well, we all. Uh, so, Pat and I so, Civil disagreement is, yes. is yeah. the keystone of our government. Nobody here. disagrees with anybody like yeah. Pat Murphy disagrees yeah. with people, though. That's well, all there is well, to Okay. It. Well, let me carry, carry on that. <laughs> At one point during the year, we were told our special ed scores came up. And the letter from the state, uh, lady, uh, Michelle Blatt, the state, state superintendent, superintendent. It's, it says on this paper addressed to Mr. Stevens, but, uh, but, but the board also received, special ed needs assistance. Everything else is meets requirement. And we were, we were told, well, this is a shout out. We, we had a lot of problems in, with discipline last year. And we're still having some issues. And, and, with and if I'm reading this right, it, blue is a positive color. They're always changing colors, greens and blues. Discipline was in the blue last year. And we said, principals being told underreport this. And we, <laughs> so here we have this paper, and I'll share it with you here. Uh, we have that. Graduation rates. We're in the green. But like you said earlier, what does it mean to with that diploma when you're going across? We're in the yellows and reds in language and math achievement. And these are areas that we're just pushing the students along, and we have to draw a line. I've talked informally. I haven't put it on the agenda yet, but I've, I've said let's – we can't tell the teachers to promote kids, and we can't tell the teachers to retain because of code. But let's encourage them to retain a certain percentage. We're way below passing. We're nowhere near 60%. If we were near 60% passing, which is a dismal number, we would be, be, be patting ourselves on the back. But I've said, let's retain a certain number of students. Just, just say, teachers, we're going to back you up. Let's retain 400 students, 2% of our population. And, and light the fire. Devil take the hindmost, or whatever you want to call it. But let's sit there and start holding students accountable. Now, I've talked to principals, very caring people. They said some children get up in the morning and get themselves off to school. Their parents leave for the city before they're up, and they come home afterward. And we can't, but we we just have to say, children, you have to understand what accountability is. You have to be accountable for your work 
and your and your grades. Heaven knows we have a lot of support service. One of the largest group of employees in our system are special education teachers and aides. We have the help there trying to help them, but the children have to understand I have a part in this, mm -hmm. and I have a responsibility, well, and, the, and we have to And teach the parents them. have to understand it too, Pat. You leave work early, and you get home late. But you also have children, and you made a decision to have children, and you are responsible for those children regardless of your schedule because they are minors and you are the adult. So if the kid doesn't have to go to, doesn't go to school, that's ultimately on the parent, whether you're present or not, because that's your responsibility because you made the decision to bring children into the world and you are responsible for those children. On that note, I will take our break here. Our guests on the program, they are the uh, president of the Berkeley County School Board, the Board of Education, Pat Murphy, and the Vice President, Jackie Long. Welcome back to both of you. Thank you so much for hanging out through the top of the hour break. Thank you. Joined by co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William. Good morning again, Rob. And the Queen Bee, Maria Lawrence. Looking at those cookies. <laughs> No, no need to look. No, I'm not getting. No, I can't eat and talk at the same time. I want to see you have to do an extra 600 crunches <laughs> tomorrow because you know you will. That's I the will. thing. You'll I eat will. one cookie and then you'll punish yourself with four hours of exercise. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, if a chat room's an indicator, they're very impressed with a board of education, a local board of education. You folks are getting a lot of support, a lot of love from that. All fair, we were talking about trying to come back to the point that I am been trying to make probably not as elegant as I should would have been a lot of uh, cooks in the fair and in, in the uh, uh, in the kitchen uh, I got the impression and again I'm directing this toward you Jack because you're you're the, you and I had the conversation off air is that you folks Board of Education have a lot of responsibility but not necessarily the authority to implement the responsibility and you were saying that they uh, you you make decisions you try to implement something but you have to get the approval from the state board of education or the legislators or something uh, or some other organization above you so there in effect you have your hands tied on not every issue but a lot of issues is did i capture your thoughts adequately Yes, very, very much so. My, my point was that, you know, we have to follow policy and code. And sometimes decisions that we make or we would like to make that we cannot do because we violate policy and code. So we can only go so far with um, what our intentions are. Might be. Now, uh, when you violate, if you will, and that's kind of a strong word, but I'm going to pick up on it. When you violate, we, you're not talking about at the kernel of the problem. You're talking about kind of on the edges, are you not? Uh, for example, the policies and code are put in there for, for a certain purpose. They were just not randomly established in code. Exactly. So there was some justification. So when you say that you would you would volume them again your word not mine uh we're talking about at what level well um, when you well, i use violate because yeah. that's if you're following a grievance or would or similar things like that you have violated somebody's violated the code yeah. or they didn't follow the code okay. yeah. and and we have um rules that we have to follow we might not like them but um, there, that's the law. That's the policy. We have to follow that. And you, uh, and you feel that, and I, I don't mean to be putting words in your mouth, but this is what I thought I heard off air. You feel that in some cases, for you to do your job adequately and to promote our local board, uh, local school system, that you are in conflict with some existing policies. Well, and it's not recently. That's yeah. been that has happened uh, year after year after year for many years back. That's you know there's a policy and a code that you have to follow. The, uh, just because a, st a county board of education feels like they would like to supersede or do something different, many times we can't do that. Good. Let me ask a more direct question. This is kind of prompted by a comment that I just had I just received from Mike Height. That's kind of the root of of my line of questioning. Is the State Board of Education serving a, a valuable function, or could we better be better served without the State Board of Education? Well, you'd have to change the Constitution in order to make that change first. 
Uh, so, but that's that's not my real question, is it? I know. Are I know, they are, I know. They, are they help? Are they constructive or counterconstructive at this point? Well, I, for me, I think they ought to be elected. But uh, but some people say, well, the interest groups will then control the board, and uh, uh, but but I I just I sometimes think they would be more accountable if they were in more touch with the people who elected them rather than appointed them. And the uh, that, but but, so I, I I, can, but but I disagree with Jackie on one okay. issue here. Sometimes, um, I, I mean, we had a babysitter. We'd go out when they were watching us when we were little kids, and they'd holler, "Mr. Monster Man, Mr. Monster Man, come and get these Murphy brats." <laughs> and we'd be hanging on to her leg, hollering, "Please don't call the Monster Man to to get us." And and uh, I sometimes think as a board, we're told. You can't push. You can't do good this. I, I'm. We have a. We have a, a administrator in this county named Dave Marquette. You all have never had him. Dave Marquette is under the radar. Uh, you had a guest on a, a week or two ago uh, talking about the movie Dirty Dozen. Yes. Yes. Well, Dave Marquette reminds me of Lee Marvin in the Dirty Dozen, mm-hmm. and I see uh, Maria sitting there smiling. He runs the transitional school and home school. He is the safety valve for the county for kids who can't get with the program. They move them out to the transitional school and stuff, and he works with them very structured. They're patted down when they come in for weapons. Uh, it, it, it's it's a very structured place. We have a fifth resource officer in this county, and that's a state policeman who works out there. So we you you should get Dave in here if you could get him to open up. But Dave runs a program, and he. And I, I know he's pushing the envelope on what's allowable. Now, he's not beating kids up or anything like that, but he's graduating kids who would not graduate otherwise. And I sometimes think as a board that we need to do things that that goes against the advice of the superintendent and staff. And I, I just think that that uh, we are told, well, you can't do that. Can Let's you, do can, it anyway. Can you give us an example of what you'd like to push through, Pat? I'd like to... Uh, well, you caught me off guard there. I don't have. I, I mentioned it earlier. You would never have somebody in the board office saying we need to retain 400 kids. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just a small fraction of what's below the passing in this county. But I think that if we did that, and I don't think I'd have the superintendent's recommendation. I've never asked him that. In all fairness to Mr. Stevens, I have to acknowledge that. But I think we need to be starting thinking outside the box and get called down on something. We're being called down on special ed here. Mm-hmm. Well, are there things we could do in special ed? I talked to a, a former principal who was doing something, and she was told, you got to stop this. You can't do this. And it, But her students were passing the scores and stuff. So sometimes we, we blame it on uh, <laughs> the, the atmosphere when we really need to confront the profs, uh, the, the people in the board is office. Part department. of the issue with holding uh, students back is if, if you hold too many back, the state gets involved and maybe the state comes in and wants to take over your school system? Is no, that part I, of the issue? I, I, don't, I don't feel that threat. <clears throat> the, the threat is usually parents don't want their child to be held back. Well, and so you have to have principals who are willing to go through the fa- hassle, and you have to bring your board in and say, look, Give me a sheet here. Where, where are they academically in, in this thing? How many times have you tried to contact the parent to come bring them in? That's that's very important. You need to start telling parents it, right after Christmas, your child's not on the right path here, and we're going to have to do something if you if you don't help us get them up. Well, and, and, and that does occur now, right? Yeah. In, in January, that's when they start telling parents that your child could be retained. But, I, I you know, I, I don't agree with... Um, retaining 400 kids or 10 percent of kids or i think that if a student needs to be retained then then the teacher has is the ultimate and authority of retaining the student um you know that's something that we would have to definitely discuss uh, you know i just to arbitrarily retain 400 kids i'm i'm just not in favor of I, I don't think pat if i understood pat correctly there is well in excess of 400 kids currently that should be retained I think your point was, let's just take the bottom 400. Clearly, if you only had 100 that d- didn't deserve promotion, you're not advocating we retain 400 for the purpose of ticking people no, off. No, and I realize that. Yeah. But uh, my my concern is, 
uh, I wouldn't want to retain 10% of our students that if they didn't need retained. Well, I'm not inflating it to 10. I wouldn't start off as the uh, conservative 2%. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is about 400 kids. About 400 kids. Yeah. Is I don't it, think we ever answered Bill's question. Well, yes, you have in a roundabout way. Uh, uh, I guess another way to ask it, again, more directly is that uh, – Pat made reference they should be elected. State Board of Education is not elected. Uh, we had an amendment this past year to uh, to to modify, put some uh, uh, control over the State Board of Education. If we if we had the authority to go with the local Board of Education and not have a state board of education. So the local board of education would affect be answering to the legislators. Would that be productive or counterproductive in your in your view? Since that's never occurred, I think that's difficult to um, to assess. That's to fair. Assess. That's fair. I, that's fair. I, but I, historically I think it happened before we got a state board of education. We had a state superintendent and the state and a, and a body that appointed the state superintendent, but I think you had more more control exercise at the local level. Now, some of those laws were uh, policies were regressive at times, reflected at times. A woman could not be married and be a teacher was one uh, issue. So look, we had a I, I, there were teachers retiring when I began teaching who had to hide the fact that they were married until their the pregnancy started showing yeah. up, but. Uh, uh, they, 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 we just didn't. Now the man, the the male teachers could be married, but the women teachers could not be married, and uh, we we uh, yeah. we had things. But but uh, to answer your question, I I, I don't know, Bill. Yeah. I I, uh, I think right now we have an excellent state superintendent, yeah. and and Dr. Steve Payne was an excellent state superintendent, and I think under her leadership, Michelle Blatt's leadership, I think we will. Yeah. Move and, forward, and they, the state board of education did step in at a critical time when there was mis, the abuse of the COVID funds in a couple of counties. And mm-hmm. without this organization called the state board of education, that could not have been addressed the, as well as it was. But is, is it possible to have an excellent state superintendent and a failing school system statewide? Well, I well, think you're yes. saying that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Be- uh, but but I ha- we have to give this person a chance too. I don't mean the new person. I mean the two previous that you, you cited. You said that were the person was an excellent superintendent. Steve Payne. Yeah. Steve Payne, he was. Right, but but we how is how is that measured? Because the well, students still been, aren't achieving grades. That's been I don't know how many years ago, but um, you yeah. know, definitely our test scores were. Higher than I yeah. think. Good questions. We just don't have good answers. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't. I mean, really I can't. Spe- and, and, I can't give you those. Yeah, a answer. lot of these questions are above your pay raise. But Mike Heights uh, jumped in on this one as well. Said other states do not have a state level board of education and are run locally and are doing a great job. And that's kind of the essence of my question. Now, I realize you you cannot change this, but should there be some? Uh, some interest on the part of the legislators taking another hard look, and if it can be viewed that we can do better with all more local control, again, constitutional amendment. But constitutional and look how that it. works. No, yeah. no, no, no. It, it does work. It does work. Does work well. You have to just th- think through the process very carefully. So you cannot do it easily over it. But if well, it's justified, it can be done. Let me t- let me say this uh, before I forget it. Pat, I don't want to interrupt you, but if that would occur, there has to be input from county boards of ed. It can't be a legislative idea that has no input from the people who are dealing with it uh, down at the the local level. Point well taken, that's right. And one of the problems that's not being brought up here, and I was guilty of this as a former legislator, uh, Berkeley County would have, have a, pro- a problem that I perceive was a problem. I'd go down, and I knew how to use that little green notebook and offer an amendment to an existing law going through. Now, I, f- I felt good about a lot of them, but sometimes our solution in Berkeley County became a problem in 54 other counties. And that's a problem with the legislative process is that uh, and you see them. One getting, size fits all. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they're getting into curriculum, and you should isolate curriculum in the State Department and not have it in the uh, legislature because 
uh, you you can get some crazy people down there. And, uh, <laughs> Present <laughs> company excluded. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was crazy. You know, I was viewed as nuts as home job. So. Yeah, and, 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 and Maria, the key word there was was. That's right. That's and, right. and Maria Lawrence referred to that as Murphy's Law. There you go. There <laughs> but, you go. You know, having Pat in with us, he's the only person I know that can speak with authority of being a county commissioner, speak with authority of being a state legislator, speak with authority of being president of the Board of Education. And I live outside the city, so I'll never be mayor. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, uh, not to change gears too terribly much, but. I think this sort of fits in um, because in terms of staffing, in terms of what you're trying to do with bus drivers and teachers and, you know, we're talking about kids who don't come to school and parents who, um, you know, whatever has, has made them be part of the problem there. Um, you know, but you're also talking about very serious issues in terms of staffing. Um, you know, you can't find bus drivers, you can't find aides, you can't find teachers. What about, I mean, the whole thing is just, over, could be overwhelming, it right? Is, it is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Uh, when you have students um, that uh, don't, don't have an aide in the classroom, um, you know, when you don't have enough cooks, you, you have a high school that uh, has 1,700 kids that uh, maybe down one or two cooks. It, it, it's, it's a difficult, and, and that job is as important as the superintendent's job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all these positions are, you, you know, they're important. We can't run the school system the way but, we would like to run it. But uh, for first, our HR department and Miss Bobo and, and PR and everyone did a great job on Saturday of having a, a, a bus uh, recruiting program. Uh, over 60 some people drove the bus. Jackie drove the bus and she didn't quit until the third round. I, yeah. I was I was beginning to feel like I was in the movie Ben Hur, you know, in the chariot race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I loved it. <laughs> but. But, but just, they don't want to do it. But, some yeah, but they don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah we, we, have le we have 11 bus driver positions open right now out of 240 runs. We have 255 permanent subs in our, school, in our classrooms right now. We have 15 vacant professional positions. 11 of those are elementary teachers, two are middle. Uh, we, we are trying to get people, but it's, it's difficult and West Virginia is second to only Alaska in, in the workforce readiness uh, or participation rate. Yeah. And so um, we're trying to – we have hardworking people at the board office trying to pitch in and do this job. Uh, we're doing it. The, the people are just not responding to the things. We're, uh, I think they get paid nineteen dollars an hour to drive a bus plus. It's well, it's about one hundred thirty-eight dollars a day. Yeah, so it's it's uh, we're we're doing we're 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 working hard, and uh, but we're also competing with an economy around here that's on the upswing. Well, and, and frankly, the more the county expands and recruits businesses in, and we're seeing the starting salaries at uh, or an hourly rate to some of these businesses that come in, the less competitive your rate is. Mm -hmm. And right. you're bound by how much you can pay Definitely. by state code, correct? Well, well we, we can give county raises. Um, that's difficult for us to do. You have to give it out of the school board budget. But, but yeah. here, here's another thing. You just opened up a, a good topic here. We have the West Virginia, I think, Development Authority has 500 and some million dollars worth of equipment that's not on the tax rolls because it's owned by the state. And that's an incentive to attract businesses here. But who is subsidizing that cost? I say public education is subsidizing, subsidizing that cost, um, uh, that, that uh, money. Why and, that, why and how? Works. Why and how, Pat? Because they're not collecting taxes on the okay. excess levies for those monies. And we would have an abundance of money. My question is, why should public ed, which is ranked second in the Constitution, be subsidizing economic development? We should not. It should be the state that's picking up a tab, not public ed. But, but I, as I understand it as well, Pat, however, 
by having a levy, you also get less of the school aid formula because you have a local levy, as Delegate Hornby has, has described this to me. No, the excess the levy, levy does not count against you. It's well, only the Jackie's regular saying I'm levy. right here. No, the excess levy doesn't count against you. Yeah, it's the regular the, levy. The, that the regular cut, levy. The regular cut, levy. Yeah. Cut, cuts back on your uh, state's yeah. school aid formula. Whichever yeah. the, the levies, but the point yeah. is that by, by generating local revenue, you're also losing some of the state funding you should be getting, correct? No, no. You're losing, you're losing some of the tax dollars. He's talking about, in effect, the pilot program of which uh, uh, you get a defer payment for so many years. 82% of that dollars goes to the Board of Education. Right. That's being deferred. Yeah. But I'm talking about what Mike Hornby, who's a delegate, told me in regards to some of the local levies that you have, whether that's an excess or a regular. I don't know the terminology. He's, but, he's but, right but, about the regular. But he's on the Education Committee, and he yes. said, as a result, the county gets fewer state funds than it should get right because that's the, that's what the the law is if you have yeah. a, a, some type well, of local levy then you get gypped from the state funds. and just try that to should be un- changed. yeah just try to understand the school aid formula i mean a- and how that all works i don't think um joe q public citizen really understands that whole funding mechanism because you know the board gets a certain the board the the system gets a certain amount of money um, for each student, and that's how you base your staffing in a particular um, school, in a particular system. And then what comes over that excess, um, you know, regular levies, bonds, all those kinds of things, that that has a whole different um, mindset. Hey, um, on, on that note, we've got to, we are out of time, so we've hmm. got to cut, uh, cut the discussion short here. Jackie and Pat, great to have you back in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.